have statistics that shows that 70% of the food we eat in Nigeria is produced by, again, 70% of our women who are farmers. So which means they are the majority in terms of farmers that are feeding the nation. And you can't have a decision or a policy without 70% of whom is supposed to be implemented with for them to be not to be around the table. So that is why it is important. They are what we have, the number we have here are just representatives of the larger farmers that are out there. So it is important for them to understand these policies, engage with the right stakeholders so that the policy is being implemented in their own interest. A priority for them, like I said, is security issue. There's challenge of own security in farm. There's also the challenge of um, loans, that loans are above uh, one digit, so it's too high for women to pay. Sometimes they get these loans and um, animals destroy their food. They've collected loans and the fruits are destroyed, so they don't have means to pay their, uh, back the loans they have collected so that others too can benefit from that. They have really, really cried out for government to look at the interest rates that are given to farmers, especially small farmers like the women that we have around here. Uh, actually, just in these two days, we've actually been discussing when we look at the APP document, the simplified version that was done by Action Aid. We've been looking at a lot of issues that has been happening that is affecting women, especially this issue of a uh, gap in communication. We know sometimes in the year there was you know, a weather forecast that indicated that there will be flood. But this issue was not actually stepped down to the areas where women are farming. And they were not aware until when flood came and washed away all their lands. And secondly, the issue of having access to credit. They've been having a lot of challenges around that areas because most of the time the conditions attached to these credits are conditions that these women cannot you know, be able to fulfill. A woman living in an area where she doesn't have water bill, no electricity, when she even goes to open an account, they'll ask her to present such document. It becomes difficult for her to produce such document, and she may not be able to have access to the credit. I want the government to tackle the issue of security very serious. Instead of bringing support to IDPs, they should stop these challenges that will make people move to IDPs. Security should be a key word in food security in the country. And they will just allow this thing, they will be hearing the rumors, they will not tackle it until when it happens, they will begin to bring back of rice to them, mattresses. This will not solve the problem. Instead, let us stop, stop this problem of insecurity once and for all. Let's call, come back to the former Nigeria we know, where we live as one nation, one Nigeria, and we live in peace with one another. The only problem we have in part of the Southwest we have security problem. So you know the ice men go to their farms, they ride up on the tree. So as soon as they saw the farmer inside their farm, they will just shoot their gun. The farmer will run away. Instead, their cow will come in and eat their crops. Part of the challenges which I will appeal to federal government to help the women farmers in getting is the uh, uh, female-friendly equipment. When we get female-friendly equipment, we'll be able to handle our equipment ourselves. In most cases, the federal government is trying in making sure that they give some equipment to women, but, in, but because of lack of capacity, they don't know how to use such equipment, and it will be lying there. I want to encourage government, they should work on extension workers. We farmers, we need extension workers. We don't have extension workers. We don't see them. They are very few. And most of they should increase the female extension workers. Also, I want to tell them that anything that they are doing, they should remember that women, we have a lot of responsibilities at home. Our responsibilities in the home is much. So they cannot always merge us with men or going side by side with men. When they merge us, when they have uh, imputes, financial assistance for farmers, and they put it on the same page with men, you see that the men will take it all. But when they remember that we, we have responsibilities at home and we need to fulfill those responsibilities and also do our farm work, they should step down a little for gender.
they should be gender sen sensitive. Even in their budget, they should try to include women farmers in their budget uh, when they are preparing budget, so that they will know what we need. We are the ones that wear the shoes. We are the ones that know where it pains us, not them. So when they are preparing budget for us, they should ask from us, they should inquire from us, so that they know the appropriate things to do. So the forum is actually a national farmers forum. It brings farmers from all 36 states in Nigeria, smallholder women farmers. The reason is for them to be able to network with each other, to most importantly engage policy makers and decision makers in terms of issues that affect smallholder women farmers and to see how they can strengthen the partnership across the federal engagement and also at the state and at the local government. So it's an interactive session for discussions and to also carry all the farmers along and basically to also get updates on the successes, challenges and opportunities that they have in the different states in Nigeria. In fact, it's been a very big delight to first of all know that our dream to ensure that smallholder women farmers take ownership for their growth, for their development and empowerment and they have 